cleaning my teeth. Hey guys, so I'm finally here with my... <coughs> what the hell was that? Okay. Hey guys, I'm here with my labor and delivery story finally. Um, I know it's taken me like three months. I know. I'm sorry. But, um, let's just talk about how my labor and delivery went. So, on December 17th, I get a phone call from the nurse at the doctor's office, and she's like, hey, it was like 3 o'clock, and she's like, hey, um, can you come in today to get to start being induced around 6 o'clock? And I'm like, sure. Like, I was so caught off guard, but I was so excited because I couldn't wait to meet the baby. So, you know, you're just so excited. I was like, sure. I had to go in there regardless. If she wouldn't have called me, the plan was to go in there at 6 in the morning on Friday the 18th. Um... So it was just a few hours earlier. So I said yes, and I finally got to the hospital around 7 o'clock at night. And she's like, well, we're not going to begin inducing you yet. What we're going to do is we're going to soften your cervix so you're ready for to be induced on Friday. So I was like, okay, I didn't know that. You didn't tell me that, but okay. Um, so she checked me first to see how far, if I was dilated at all, which I was. Um, I actually started dilating um, around 30, at 39 weeks, I found out I was dilated at one and a half centimeters, and at 40 weeks, at my due date appointment, December 11th, I was three centimeters. So by December 17th, I was, when she checked me, I was still three centimeters, and she kind of seemed surprised, like if she didn't know that, which. I assume the doctor would have known that when he had me go to the hospital, um, but I don't know. It seemed it kind of came off like they didn't know. And then because I was dilated to three centimeters, they decided not to in, um, soften the cervix anymore because it was doing it on its own, I guess. And since it was already three centimeters, I guess it was doing it by itself, fine, just fine. So they said, never mind, let's change of plan. So she ended up calling my doctor and to see what they wanted to do because I was already there, um, you know, were they going to induce me then or was I going to have to wait till the morning? Um, the doctor then decided to just start inducing me that night, inducing me around 10.30 p.m. and um, they started with the Pitocin. Nothing happens, like I don't start feeling contractions right away or anything, um, you know, so I was pretty relaxed from like 10.30 till about like... I was relaxed, like, actually for, from, like, 10.30, you know, till, I want to say 4 o'clock, 3.30, 4 o'clock, and I actually slept straight through, like, I felt, like, I want to say from, like, 12.30, 1 o'clock to, like, 3.30 I slept, um, like, straight, like, I did not, I was having contractions, but they weren't strong enough where it didn't let me sleep, obviously, because I did sleep. So it wasn't until like 3.34 that I woke up. So the contractions were pretty painful already around that time. And that's when I decided to um, have, I wasn't going to have the epidural. So I decided that the only thing I would get would be, let me read this off my notes. Because I have notes. Because I filmed this before and I totally forgot some things. So today I have notes. So, I didn't want the epidural, but I decided to get fentanyl, which is something that they offer you anyways, and that's how pretty much I knew about it, because I had it with Danny and Camila. Um, so, they offered me fentanyl, and that's just given through the IV, and it just helps, I, I feel like it just helped me relax. It made me a little dizzy, but kind of like, just like a happy dizzy. Like, the nurse was like, yeah, you're going to feel a little drunk, but, you know, it'll go away. So that's given through an IV, and that's the only thing I had planned on getting. I didn't want the epidural. Um, so I want to say the fentanyl, they started giving that to me around 4.30, 4, 4.30. And the reason why I waited till the, I waited pretty much till the contractions were pretty bad to get it was because once you start getting that, um, it only lasts, okay, the effects only last for I want to say 30 to 45 minutes at the first few doses after that they just get less and less and less so you can get the medication every half an hour which I did 
you know, I would, like, say I got it at 4.30, made sure I got it at 5, because by that time, my contractions were pretty painful. Um, and then I would get at 5.30, and then 6, but towards the end, it does start, like, it's almost like it doesn't even last you that 30 minutes anymore, and it's like after 10 minutes, I was like, can I get it again? But it's not 30 minutes yet, so they won't give it to you. Honestly, that helped me so much. It, like... If it wasn't for that, I don't know if I would have been able to, you know, do it. But, um, pretty much the reason why I didn't want the epidural is because I didn't have it with my other two kids. And being Hispanic, Hispanic ladies, Hispanic mothers, Hispanic aunts and grandmas, they're just like, no, you know, we didn't have that back then. You can do it. And, you know, you're just going to get sick from the epidural. It's going to cause some kind of, you know, issues later down the line. So, um, I didn't get that epidural, pretty much. That was it. So, I got the fentanyl, which was great. I, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. I'm not telling you guys to do. I'm just telling you my story and what helped me, okay? Um, so, that helped a lot. Now, by set, like around 7.25 a.m., um, my contractions were, they were strong. They were strong. And the reason why I know this now that I'm thinking about it um, it's because I went back and watched my uh, video that my husband was recording while I was in labor and he pretty much gave me exact times that's why I'm giving you exact times and I saw how like I was you know just moving my head back and forth I was pretty much in distress I um, so pretty much I would say at 7 around 20, 725 that's when I they were painful and I was already getting the urge to push but I couldn't push yet. 7.25 and 8.10, somewhere along that line, I the nurse offered me to get in the shower to have the, you know, the water just kind of hit my back and just kind of relax me a little bit because I was laying down in the bed and the bed was super uncomfortable. Whoever invented these labor and delivery beds, honestly, no. You need to redesign it because they are so uncomfortable. Like, I don't even remember it being that uncomfortable with Danny and Camila. Like, this time, I was just like, seriously? Seriously, like, are these new? Like, I, I was so confused because I didn't remember that. There, but that helped me a lot. Um, so I did try to walk around, bounce in the ball. There's so, some things that you can do that they let you do. Um, I mean, I still had to be hooked on the Pitocin. So I guess that gave me lack, less things to do. If you're like, if your contractions come on natural, I think you're able to do more. But I couldn't do that because I was being induced. So I had to be connected through the IVs to monitor myself and all that at all times. But the shower really helps. So if you guys are going to be in labor soon, ask them if you can go in the shower when the contractions are really bad. And that really helped me. So God bless that nurse. Because um, nobody offered me that in the other two pregnancies, okay? Really at 8.10... They checked me and I still had one more dial, uh, centimeter to go uh, to be at 10 centimeters. Um, so I had one more centimeter to go, but I still had the urge to push a lot. Uh, but they're like, no, no, you know, you can't push yet. The doctor's not here. Um, so finally, the doctor got there at 8.30 a.m. And he's like, okay, I'm ready. Whenever you're ready to push, go ahead, just let us know. And I did have the urge to push, so it took me several times, honestly. Um, I don't remember, like, it was actually harder to push him out than my other two kids. And honestly, it's because he was a big baby. He was 9 pounds, 11 ounces. So I now I know why I was struggling to push him out. Um, but yeah, so the doctor was like, you know... Juan was in one leg, the nurse was in the other leg, the doctor was ready to catch the baby or pull him out, whatever he had to do. And um, throughout this time though, like him and Juan, my husband, they were just like, the doctor and him were just getting on so well, cracking jokes and just having the time of their lives while I'm laying there in pain. Just, you know, it was I was getting annoyed. Honestly, I was. But... I mean, I know I was getting annoyed because I was just not having a good time at the moment. But um, I'm glad they got along. It took several pushes. I felt like I was there for hours, but I wasn't. Um, it must have been like 25 minutes. Uh, but, you know, it just, I felt the urge to push. And as soon the contraction would come, I felt the urge to push. As soon as that ur the contraction left, that urge was gone. And that's what was giving me, it was, it was just giving me a hard time. Because the doctor's like, every time you stop pushing, you're just 
putting the baby back in and just try to hold it even if you don't feel the urge to push he's like just push but um, it's really hard to push when you can't like you don't feel like pushing so that was hard and but finally I at 8 59 a.m. the baby was born Yay! so baby Lorenzo was born at 8 59 a.m. and right away right away uh, they put him on my skin it was a skin to skin moment for about an hour and 20 minutes everything went great um, honestly after that once the baby comes out and then the placenta and all that it's just a big relief relief um, but this time honestly I feel like because he was bigger he was nine pounds 11 ounces um, and he came out healthy baby nothing happened to me I was healthy um, you know I'm so blessed I was so nervous this pregnancy for the labor and delivery honestly that's the, the thing that I worried about the most and so did Juan we were just so worried I don't know why like I don't know if it's because we're older now um, I, you know it's just a totally different experience if you guys didn't know I had my first baby at 18 and then my second at 22 and now I'm 27 and honestly totally different experience than my first two Honestly, it was a lot easier when I was younger. Uh, I know I still am young, but um, yeah, and I just worried a whole lot more. You would think that being young and pregnant, you would worry more about the labor and delivery, but no, I never really were freaked out about it until this pregnancy. I was really nervous. I think maybe because I already knew what was coming. <laughs> hope you guys like my labor and delivery story. I'm sorry if it's like all over the place because Jackie likes to talk. And sorry if you guys saw me reading off my notes just because uh, I didn't want to miss anything. But I will see you guys next time. Bye. Hey, so baby's going to make an appearance. He wasn't going to be in it just because he was sleeping, but he woke up as soon as I was done. So you might as well be in your video. Oops, my lipstick's <laughs> sticking out his hair. Say hi, everybody. I was the one that was giving mommy a hard time. <laughs> But he is such a big baby and he's so happy. Um, he cries quite a bit. Lorenzo, you need to change your ways. Camila, I think. Camila, come here. You can be in the video. Okay, come here. Come here. Come here. Okay, come here. Stand up in the chair. Stand up in the chair. Come here, look at everybody. So this is the big sister. Oh, she was eating. No, no, look. Stop. <laughs> Camila. Camila. But you want to know, let me tell you why I didn't make a video when you were born. Do you want to know why? Because I wasn't making videos. I wasn't making videos when, when you were in my belly. But you don't have to cry about it. Tell everybody what Lorenzo did today by himself. What did Lorenzo do today by himself? Mm -hmm. Tell him. He fed himself. What was he doing? He was holding what? The bottle by himself. Yeah. And who and who did this everybody say Lorenzo looks like? Me. Yeah, so look at the camera to see if everybody from YouTube thinks you guys look alike. Come on, look. Little Lorenzo, look over there, Lauren. Look, he's looking at you. He's like, hi sister, I know you. He's like, why are you crying, sister? I love you. He loves you, princess. Look at the camera. See, him. do you guys think they look alike, Lorenzo? He's looking like he's like just staring at your beautiful. He's like, I'm staring at my beautiful sister. Look, he's smiling at you. Say hola, hola. He smiled. I caught it on camera. Alrighty then. So we could all say bye. Ready? Ready? Want to say bye? Alright, Lorenzo's not looking at the camera. Alright, hasta luego. Say adios. Bye guys, see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. How do you think that my labor and delivery was with Lorenzo? It was more chilling. It was more easy, smooth. You know what I mean? You don't think I'm scared? Nah. So compared to Daniel and Camila's birth? I was panicked. I was panicked. First time cutting, <gasps> cutting the umbilical cord. Yeah, last time he didn't let me. With the other two, they did not. Jerks.
No, I'm it just was, kidding, it Dak. Was, I'm just kidding, Dak. It was a different Dak. I don't think he's watching. How was I? How did I deal with the labor and the delivery? I think he did great. I think he did great, you know. Uh, yeah, you were chilling. You, 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 you didn't back down. Was I crabby? Was I bitchy? Was no, I... no, you were actually pretty cool. Yeah? Yeah. It was nice to you? Yeah, no. Pretty simple. Calm? Was I calm? No, you were calm. You were getting a little bit, you know, anxious towards the end, you know, but I guess it's not. You know, cool. I think I can deliver a baby now. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So next one we'll do a homework.